And you know what they say, the spray man gets paid. Acid spray was kind of disrespectful to be honest, so apologies there. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Ox here with another video. If you're new to the channel, we do upload Pokemon Go content mostly related to PvP. So please consider subscribing to the channel if that is of interest to you. And if you're a returning subscriber like Vixie Eric, thank you for the support. So before we jump into today's video, let me address the question that a lot of people have been asking about what is going on with the double ice strategy. Some people are asking, does double ice still work? Others are asking if I've given up on the team. To answer those questions, no, I have not given up on the team. And yes, it does still work. The main reason I'm not using it is because I have already hit legend. I'm running a lot more fun teams, you know, a lot of Verizon, a lot of meme stuff. With that said, it turns out a lot of you want to see double ice content on this channel. So I will definitely be making a video about that team coming up probably this weekend and for that video in particular what I'm gonna look to do is tank my rating down to about 2800 and see how quickly I can get back up past 3000 using the double ice strategy in fact I might even use a shadow Lapras for that video because I finally got one built and I think it has some potential now, as for today's video, we are taking a look at a team that I featured earlier this season with Lapras in the lead, Giratina Altered Form, and Escavalier in the back. As for the movesets here, you can see I'm running Dragon Breath on the Giratina. I do think Shadow Claw performs better in general. However, I just wanted to test it out, you know, have some fun. I don't really care about the rating at this point, so Dragon Breath it is. Acid Spray on Escavalier. Mega Horn, Drill Run, probably the preferred moveset. Gives you a lot of easier matches against Cresselia, Umbreon. But I do actually really like Acid Spray, especially because this team's so weak to Charmers in the back i kind of like having that acid spray potential just to make a couple of those matchups a bit easier if you guys enjoyed this video please consider leaving a like it really helps the channel grow leave a comment in the comment section down below subscribe to the channel if you have not already and without any further ado let's jump into the first battle right now so for today's video we're going to take a different approach to this we went 18 and 7 overall with this team what I'm going to do is go over a 5-0 set in the first half and in the second half just go over losses because I feel those offer a lot more to learn from as a viewer. So here, Lapras into Obstacoon. Basically, this matchup could be won in the one shield if Obstacoon is not running cross chop, so I always wait to see what the move is. Once I see cross chop, I swap out immediately. Now, I came into a Scavalier here, which is a little bit risky, but at the time I thought I had Shadow Claw on the Giratina. I did have Dragon Breath, so I could have came in with that. But it turns out that they have a Clefable, so the Giratina would have got absolutely destroyed. Can't really do anything with Dragon Breath. We see Clefable come in here. I do bait with the Acid Spray. Now we get to the Drill Run with the lower defense on Clefable. Look at how much this does. Boom, that's a lot of damage. Can we farm it down before it knocks us out? No, we cannot, but we got very close there. And our Escavalier was in the yellow. So that's a pretty impressive run right there. I come in with the Giratina knowing that they are at a move. I don't want the Lapras to take it, so the Meteor Mash comes onto the Giratina. That's fine. We Dragon Breath down. I'm hoping they come back in with Obstacle, not realizing it is Dragon Breath, but they do notice that coming in with Cresselia. One of the problems running Dragon Breath is that you do have a worse matchup here against Cresselia. However, it is still manageable to an extent, so I'm going to shell up the first move. And it is a Moonblast. No attack drop. That's very good. And now building up to another Shadow Sneak, gonna throw that once again. And I believe at some point I will switch. Yeah, so it looked like I was trying to swap there. Didn't manage to catch this move. I'm gonna let the Giratina know I'm gonna shield up. Gonna look to swap out into Lapras at some point here, try to catch the Moonblast. Instead the opponent swaps onto Obstacoon. I have the Ice Beam ready, so this is huge for us. This should be enough to knock out the Obstacoon, just barely, but we are able to farm down. So we get rid of the Obstacoon, the Cresselia comes back in. We're actually not in Grass Knot range here, so I should be able to get off at least one Surf. It might not actually be running Grass Knot, it looks like, so I do get to the Ice Beam instead. And now, if they're trying to build up for another move last, they can't really farm me down, or else I will get to another move. So let's see what they do. They actually are going for the farm down, so that allows me to get to the Surf. Lapras is going to clean up this game, so we come back from a very difficult lead there in Obstacoon, and we get off to a 1-0 start here in the first set. So Sato Ilp here in the next matchup. I know a lot of you guys are asking why Acid Spray on a Scavalier. To be honest, I really just like Acid Spray, you know. It's a pretty fun move to use. I like the baiting mind games behind it. We got a pretty solid lead here in Talonflame. Opponent swaps out to Umbreon. So here it comes, the Escavalier. And you know, this is a matchup where obviously having Mega Horn probably benefits you, but it's still a winning matchup regardless if you have it or not. Counter's doing a lot of damage. Drill Run still hurts. 
no point really to go here for the bait because they pretty much never shield the Umbreon in this particular matchup, especially with the Talon Flame there. You have to understand they want to come in and farm down this Escavalier, right? So that gets me thinking now. I know they want to come in and farm me down, so I'm going to let this go through. And I have two Pokemon that do pretty well against Talon Flame, so how important is Switch here? Probably not that important, so I'm actually going to let the Escavalier go down here, get a bit of an energy lead on this Umbreon, and then I know both of my Pokemon, Giratina and Lapras, could both handle the Talon Flame. So if Talonflame comes in here now, which it does, or no, it doesn't, Cresselia comes in. So I'm going to throw the Ice Beam here. And I guess I'll have to stay in here for a bit before swapping out. Try to catch the Grass Knot onto the Giratina, I think is the play here. So let's see if that's what I tried doing. I throw another Ice Beam here. And it's doing quite a bit of damage. And unfortunately, I'm not able to catch the move. Grass Knot's not going to KO anyway, so it's not a big deal. Grass Knot does come through. And it looks like I'm trying to put this Cresselia in as low of a health range as possible, which makes sense because I am running Dragon Breath on the Giratina. So Grass Knot comes through, we survive that, get off this Surf, and now I'm going to swap out into my Giratina. Opponent swaps out late into the Talon Flame here. And remember, in this particular matchup, never, ever, ever shield the first move from Talon Flame because if they go for the Brave Bird right away, it's not going to KO, it's going to lower their defense. They will never go for the Brave Bird the first time if they're locked into the matchup. If they're not locked or if it shields down, it's a different story, of course. But in this particular situation right here, you never want to shield the first one. Now at this point, of course, as you're getting boosted, Brave Bird becomes more threatening. So I'm going for the Dragon Claw right here. And it does get the second shield. And I'm going to get to one more Dragon Claw. This actually isn't going to be enough to KO. I guess you could wait until they throw a move. I try to make... A ridiculous swap here. This could have actually cost me the game there. I thought they were going to throw immediately, but they actually, they might have overtapped to be honest, so it might have been unintended right there on their part. But we do shield up the flame charge, farm down, Cresselia comes back in, able to take it out with Dragon Breath. Dragon Breath, Giratina, Cresselia counter confirmed. Let's jump into this next match. SF0, 722, match number three. Taking a look at a Lapras lead into a Gyarados. So a pretty solid lead right here. For Lapras, winning pretty much all even shield situations. And I'm going to go straight for the Ice Beam here. So opponent's going to throw, probably going to be a Crunch. I'm going to shield out the first one. Did call the Crunch correctly. And go for the Ice Beam. So let's see if the opponent wants to shield. Uh, if they do shield, I'm still going to win this matchup. So I'm okay with that. I actually prefer that to be honest. And now I'm probably going to go for the Surf, I'd imagine at this point. I'm going to let this go through here. Probably an Aqua Tail. No, it is a Crunch, so... Doesn't matter, Crunch doesn't KO. I'm gonna build up for two Surfs here. Uh, Ice Beam would actually be enough to pretty much win this matchup right here, but I go for the Surf, they call it the bait, and that means I get to a second Surf. So now they could take Switch if they want to go down a Shield. So let's see what they decide to do. They do decide to do that. So not optimal for me, but I do still have a Shield, so it's not the worst situation. The main issue here is that they're probably going to get to a Crunch against my Giratina. So let's see if I choose to shield this. I might not, to be honest. No, I'm not shielding it. Crunch comes through. We take that pretty well. Farm down. Let's see what's in the back. It's a Togekiss. I swap out into a Scavalier. They swap into Lapras, which was a bit surprising. It actually works out better for them, to be honest, because I am running Acid Spray. So I know I have to shield up a move here, because Lapras has a pretty decent matchup still against the Scavalier. I build up four two drill runs. I'm going to try and throw back to back here. And this is probably going to be the first example of where Acid Spray comes through clutch so this game is actually crazy towards the end we managed to take out the lapras before getting hit by a surf which is huge and we're gonna go straight for the acid spray here remember my giratina is running dragon breath so we have almost no play whatsoever here with the giratina i'm trying to get to one more acid spray they are actually forced to throw energy here because of how much damage i'm actually doing at this point look how much health they have i'm gonna go for the shadow sneak dragon breath's doing nothing Check out how much damage this Shadow Sneak's going to do with the Acid Spray effect. Holy smokes, can we farm down before Charm? Giratina, Togekiss, Counter, confirmed. Dragon Breath Giratina at that. So, the Acid Spray, the Spray Man gets paid right there. Lapras into Swampert, another very solid lead right here. I mean, it's not like the best lead in the world, but it's pretty positive, especially if you could call the Earthquake. So I'm going to go straight for the Ice Beam here. You don't necessarily have to go for Ice Beam. You can win this match going straight for Surf, actually. So probably not really necessary to go for Ice Beam, to be honest. But hey, whatever. We go for Ice Beam. I didn't expect the Shield anyways. And now they swap out into Toxicroak. So when I see Toxicroak come into 
an open Ultra League match, I assume they went into the wrong league because Toxicroak has very little play in the open Ultra meta for the most part. So most likely the opponent went into the wrong league here if I had to guess, but maybe they are running Toxicroak. I mean, could still be Mel Metal Register and stuff. So it has some play, but I think in general, it's better suited for the Premier Cup because it gets it gets like walled by Giratina completely. Now we see XL Stunfist come in here, which is obviously a problem for a Dragon Breath Giratina. If I had Shadow Claw, it wouldn't be as bad, but with Dragon Breath, of course, we're in a bit of a tight spot here. So I'm going to go for the Shadow Sneak here. And definitely not expecting a shield at this point. They do not shield. And they bring in the Swampert here. So I'm going to throw the Dragon Claw. No, they actually beat me to a move here. If it's Hydro Cannon, it's not going to KO. So I'm going to let it go through. It's Earthquake. I get to farm. It is a Hydro Cannon. Kind of cheese now that I did click the move. So I'm not going to tap anything. Swap out into Lapras to get a bit of an energy lead here. Which we're able to do from the undercharge. Sunfist comes in. Now we have the Surf ready. Which is great because this is probably CMP tie. So getting that extra Ice Shard against the Swampert was huge there. Or else we wouldn't have got that shield, right? Because we weren't at the surf. It was CMP. Rockside comes through. Now we have a Skyler in the back. Obviously, this is pretty much GG's here. We have shield advantage. And you know what they say? The spray man gets paid. Is Scavalier here out? Is Scavalier out here like Kawhi Leonard? Going to take this Rockside calling the bait. Going for the acid spray right here. We want to finish this game off in style. Lower it with the counter. And the opponent surrenders. Not much play there, so Acid Spray was kind of disrespectful to be honest, so apologies there. No blue, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the next matchup. We got Lapras into Giratina, another very solid lead. And they swap out into Sir Fetch, so I come in with the Giratina here. Another very strong matchup for Giratina. And don't worry, there are a lot of hard counters coming in the second half of this video, so stay tuned for that. We got Giratina here throwing the Dragon Claw at the Sir Fetch. It gets a shield, which was honestly very surprising to me because Sir Fetch isn't going to win this matchup no matter what they do pretty much. So they go for another Night Slash here. The main reason is because the counters aren't doing anything. So I go for the Dragon Claw here. They're going to lose Switch and a shield. They actually go for a second shield, which I was like, what the heck is going on? So now I'm forced to shield, of course, but I could just farm down from this point. It makes me think that they really don't have another answer for Lapras. So the Giratina probably has no play aside from that. So winning switch was very important for the opponent, I find. But unfortunately for them, Surfetch couldn't do anything even with two shields. Now I'm going to come in with the Lapras. Here comes Cresselia. Going to come in for Scavalier here. Now with the shield, obviously it's a winnable matchup for the Scavalier. And the thing too is, if we land the Acid Spray and the shield, then you know the match becomes more favorable for Scavalier. If they don't show the acid spray, then obviously it's really bad. It goes both ways, but you know, Mega Horn is obviously a lot better in that particular matchup. But we do go 5 0 in that first set. And for the second half of this year, we're going to take a look at some losses, analyze some misplays, and what we could have done better. So, jumping into part two of this video, I have handpicked some losses in which I want to go over these battles because I feel there are some things to learn. So, Mel Metal lead into Lapras, obviously very difficult, so I'm going to swap out immediately into Giratina. Now, Giratina with Dragon Breath isn't a great counter there for the Mel Metal, of course, but most of the time they are going to swap out, and we get met by one of the worst counters we could see here in Clefable. And this is probably why you want to run Shadow Claw as a safe switch. Because unless the opponent is bringing in the Snorlax Obstacle immediately without realizing that you have Dragon Breath, it's most often going to have a much worse time against a lot of the safe switches. So, Dragon Breath Giratina, not optimal as a safe switch, but very optimal as a counter to a switch. So I come in with Lapras here. Fortunately, going to have to take a move. It is a Moonblast. I'm hoping I could farm down from this point before they get to another move which we are able to do, but now they do have a Mel Metal, so I swap out into a Scavalier. I know they had energy. This is going to be a superpower. I was debating whether or not I wanted to shield. In the end, I decided to shield because I probably need health on this for the Pokemon in the back. Happens to be Cresselia. Now, this is a particular situation where having Mega Horn helps. So I build up to the Mega Horn and they don't shield, which is a pretty crazy play right there. However, they do make the call. They have Moonblast, so I'm still in a good position here. I'm actually going to decide to build up again to where Mega Horn would be, go for the Acid Spray. Drill Run would actually be hurting at this point too, so the opponent does shield. Now they're super debuffed, and at this point, Drill Run is going to probably KO from this range, or at least do a lot of damage, so still not using any shields. 
I actually didn't go for the drill run there. They swap out into Melmetal. Thankfully, they're probably suspecting a drill run here, so they do shield up the Acid Spray, which is huge for me, and I swap out into Lapras. Now watch how much these Surfs are going to do with the Acid Spray drop. We actually outpace Melmetal to the next move. Lapras is going to take out a Melmetal here. That is crazy, and that's all thanks to the Acid Spray. So at this point, you're probably wondering, man, how do I end up losing this game? Well, that Cresselia actually left the matchup with a lot of energy, and I was being, should I have shielded here? I really couldn't because Surf wouldn't be enough to KO anyways, and then I was pretty much in Moonblast range after that, so I think the play was to save the shield for the Escavalier. I have to go for Drill in there, shield up here, and hope that I could farm down with Counter before they're able to farm me down or get to their next move, but you can see they had so much energy that they actually do get to the next move, so I think not throwing the Drill Run there at the Cresselia and then transferring the move over to the Melmetal might have played a factor in that game, but still was a very close game despite the lead, but a couple of mistakes there in the end game. Now next match we got one of the worst leads you could see, Galvantula. So I swap out into Giratina here and the opponent brings in another Clefable. So once again, this is the risky part in using Dragon Breath Giratina as a safe switch. So I build up for two Shadow Sneaks. Honestly, I think it might even make more sense to just use a Scavalier as a safe switch. The problem with that is it gets really hard countered by stuff like Talonflame, Giratina, you know, I mean, it's not any worse than this, but yeah, I don't know, I come with Lapras here. Unfortunately, the problem too is that you get farmed down completely with the Giratina, especially when you have Dragon Breath, so it has a lot of health here. I was hoping I could farm down, that's pretty much a win condition at this point, not able to do it, so I have to burn a shield here. I know the Galvantula is going to come back in, so I'm not liking this. I swap out into a Scavalier to farm down the remainder of that Clefable, get a bit of an energy lead here on the Scavalier, and we see a Gyarados coming back, so this is pretty much game over. I can't do anything here. Uh, there's pretty much no way I can win this game, so I go for the Acid Spray. They actually shield, which I was like, okay, well, maybe I have a chance or something, so I let the Aqua Tail go through. And I'm building up to where the Mega Horn, actually no, I don't even build up to Mega Horn, I just go straight for the Drill Run here. This isn't going to do much. And the opponent shields. So <laughs> the opponent's giving me an opportunity here. So you gotta take these, right? So they're gonna knock me out here with Aqua Tail. I'm gonna come back in with the Lapras and go for the Ice Beam. I know Ice Beam will KO, Surf would not. Now this game, I still have an opportunity to win this, which sounds incredible. So Galvantula comes in, and they're going to throw, it's going to be a lunge, but I have to shield it. They want to lower the attack. Lunge will still KO in this range. So right here, I need to get to two Surfs. Right here, I should have thrown the Surf. Because they're in the middle of a Volt Switch animation. That means I could throw this Surf. And then on the next turn, I'll be able to get to the next Surf before the Volt Switch goes through. Which means I'll be able to throw back-to-back -back Surfs, possibly win this game. But you saw, I actually went for the extra move, which meant they got another Volt Switch through. And there it is. Volt Switch comes through, knocks me out. We definitely could have, I think Surf would have KO'd there. I think it would. So that was a misplay. I think we could have won that game despite how hard it is. But again, the opponent put us in the position to win by shielding up the Gyarados there twice. So we kind of got lucky in that sense too. Next matchup, Fiery Phoenix here. Swap out into Giratina Altered. And shout out to this player. He did reach out to me after this battle. So huge shout out to you. Going to shield up the foul play here. Foul play doesn't KO, so I'm not sure if that was the correct play there. Probably not, but I didn't want to take the damage because since they stayed in, I figured maybe they don't have a hard, hard counter for Giratina. So I did choose to shield, and Cresselia comes in here. So I'm going to take the Moon Blast. I do have quite a bit of an energy lead here, so I could potentially take Switch here, which would be pretty important at this point because I have a Scavalier on the Scrafty, so... It's probably what I want to do here. I am going to shield this up, hoping it is the Moonblast, and that I could possibly farm down with Dragon Breath. I'm counting these cycle cuts at this point. We're able to do it. This is absolutely huge right now. So the Scrafty is going to come back in. Still has two shields, but we do have alignments here. We have a very good counter for Scrafty in the back. We have a lot of energy here. It's pretty much going to come down to what the third Pokemon is, I think. So we're going for the Dragon Breath here. This is the one matchup where you do want Dragon Breath over Shadow Claw, obviously. And we're not able to get to one more Dragon Claw here. So the opponent is going to take us out most likely with the Foul Play. And now I'm going to come in with the Scavalier. Opponent comes with Victini. And I swap out into Lapras, and this is where I feel I threw the game. When I saw the fire type, I immediately brought in the Lapras, but it's actually Victini, and Lapras has a very good matchup against this. 
So what I should have done here, because I'm at zero shields, I didn't take in the shields at the time, I needed to come in with Scrafty, get the first shield since I outpaced them to the first move. They have to throw a V-Crate to knock out Scrafty, to knock out the Escavalier, I should say. They have to throw a V-Crate to knock out Escavalier because the Confusions don't do anything. Lapras could tank two V-Creates, so at this point, I would be able to come back in after having getting one shield, at least throw two Surfs. Instead, I come in with a Scavalier who's gonna get one shot by the V-Crate now instead. If it was Lapras, it would not get one shot. If their Scrafty had energy in the back, then I guess it wouldn't have mattered anyways, but I definitely misplayed that game, and I do not like the way I closed out that game at all. Definitely gave the opponent a much easier time winning that game than it should have been. So next match, we got a pretty solid lead right here, Lapras into Talonflame. So I think the most important thing for me in GBL is winning the games where I get a positive lead, because anytime I lose a game of positive lead, I feel like I made a mistake. So let's see what I did here. Cresselia comes in, I come in with the Escavalier. Of course, not a hard counter here without the Mega Horn, but still playable. They have Future Sight. Now that is not good. So I'm building up for where the Mega Horn would be. Going for the Acid Spray right here. They do not shield. So I'm like, okay, well this isn't great, but I know I could still tank one more Future Sight, so I'm not too worried. They can't really farm it down with Cycle Cut. Should be able to get to two drill runs here. So throw the first drill run. Or no, I go for another Acid Spray. Okay, so I guess I'm going for the double debuff here and then the drill run. Maybe that is what I'm doing. I get to the drill run at the same time they get to the move it looks like. Is drill run going to be enough to knock out the Priscilla here? Two Acid Sprays, yes it is. We maintain Switch, which I guess isn't that big a deal because both my Pokemon do good against the Talonflame. That's probably why I went for a more risky route there in that particular matchup. And it worked out perfect for me because the Talonflame ends up getting minimal farm. So that's pretty much how I want to play out that matchup, right? We go for the Surf here on the Talonflame. They swap out to Clefable. And actually looking at these four battles that I lost now, I think in all four of those matches, I got locked into a Clefable with my Dragon Breath Giratina. So if there's something to take out of this video, maybe you want to run Shadow Claw because all these losses look like they came down to having Dragon Breath Giratina locked into Clefable. We're actually going to lose this game with two shields. My only play here is to farm down the Clefable completely, but as you could see, it was not going to happen. They were going to knock me out with Charm first. So I went for a Desperation play here with the Surf. There's no way I get to a Surf here. We're going to get two shield flexed on by the opponents, except we're the one with two shields. So we pull up Paul George right there. So those were the battles featuring the Lapras, Giratina, Escavalier team. If there's one thing to take from this video, you probably want to run Shadow Claw on the Giratina for this particular team comp. Mega Horn might benefit you in some cases, but Acid Spray still did a lot of work. You saw the Spray Man gets paid in this video. It's a very solid team. It has worked for a lot of players that I've recommended it to, and it's also worked for me earlier this season, and just when I'm looking to have fun with a pretty solid team that helps me rank up. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.